This is the Awakening Word brought to you by Rev. Samson Ajitomobi, the President of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated and Overseer of the Redemption Faith Churches. So when I say to you most time, nothing encourages a man like answers to prayer. It's an amazing truth. And I'm sure today you will experience answers to prayer. Reverend Ajitomobi is called by God with a mandate to reach the unreached at all cost and reawaken the church to our responsibilities. Every gallow the enemy have set up, by the word of God today, they will go into the same pits. Be blessed. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Number one thought is that forgiveness is the greatest investment you can offer your neighbor. No matter how tough it is. Therefore, we must learn the practice of forgiveness. Learn the practice of forgiveness. Choose to forgive every day. Learn it so that you can live it. You can never live in this life without forgiveness because somebody is going to step on your toes. Now, the Bible began to say, forgive us as we forgive other people. So, your chances of receiving God's forgiveness is largely dependent on how you forgive other people because offenses must come. When you look at Jesus re-emphasizing this in, in verse 14 and verse 15 of Matthew 6, verse 14 and verse 15, he says, For if ye forgive men, their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Verse 15. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. This is very strong to note. And it was very clear to say men, talking about persons, people, if you don't forgive your neighbor, his trespasses, then God reserved the moral right not to also forgive you. And there's a lot of unforgiveness going on, born out of bitterness of different types and form and shape. And you will appreciate that clearly in the life of Job. Job had crises in his life, crises in his marriage, crisis in his businesses nothing was working for job and job was also afflicted with a sickness in his body everything was wrong around job but he's been a great man all along and his friends came around him sat with him for a couple of days just trying to understand what has happened to job and when the first person spoke he says, in speaking, let me speak. There is righteousness with God. And if all this calamity has happened to Job, Job must be living in a secret sin. And began to demand of Job to say the truth and confess the truth to them. But we all know, reading the story of Job, that Job was not living in sin. But that was the human assessment. And all of his friends have different perspective to the crisis in the life of Job. And they were not going to just justify Job. Now what kind of challenge is that? How can your businesses collapse in one day? How can you lose all your children in one day? God is a righteous God. He can do evil. How can your health begin to fail suddenly? And all these men have this diverse opinion about Job. And God was watching Job's reaction. Thank God. In Job chapter 42 verse 10. God going to help Job said to Job. Forgive your friends. Pray for them. Forgive them. Release them. And then I will be able to make you recover everything you have lost. 
even though you stood in faith when all this crisis was happening but your friends meant well but they didn't understand what you are going through they have no idea God was behind the scene and it was a divine setup to show a man who is loyal to God not because of benefit not because of protection that even if adverse situation happened to you you will still remain true to God may we be such men that no matter what happened to us we will still remain true to God and that's all God wanted to find out from the life of Job. But his friends they didn't understand that. To his friend, it takes you living in sin to have this kind of attack. He takes you living in sin to have all this crisis. And Job was truly embittered against his friends. And I'm sure anybody will be embittered against such friends. Because it's like, are you just knowing me? We've been together for many years. How did you conclude that I was living a wrong life? That's how all these things happened to me. And there are people around you who will make wrong conclusions about you. It will become offense to them and offense to you. Now you will be very wise to forgive them ahead of time. I say, Lord, anybody can misinterpret my intention. Anybody can misjudge me, but I offer to all life the forgiving grace of God. So for God to recover Job, he demanded of Job, forgive them, pray for them, and I will recover you. Job 42 verse 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before that is the wisdom of divine investment when you look as if the enemy is playing you out of the race because you are true to God the day God returned to your cause he will give you twice he will give you twice of everything but don't forget to secure that is to first pray for his brethren. Offer them forgiveness. Offer them mercy. And that made all the difference. Men who are quick to forgive sustain a healthy mind. They sustain a healthy mind. Men who are quick to forgive sustain a healthy mind for themselves. Number two, forgiveness releases you. When you forgive easily, you're a joyful person. But when you don't forgive, your mind gets choked up with all manner of things. And don't forget, when you forgive people, you interpret everything they do to you from the mind of a forgiven mind. When you do not forgive people, you will interpret everything they do from that unforgiving mind. So once the mind is corrupted and injured and affected, everything around you is being interpreted based on how healthy your mind is. Grow a healthy mind. You will be stronger than your yesterday. Amen. Forgiveness recovers hurting and uncomfortable persons back to normal life. While unforgiveness judges and condemns everyone that is around you. Forgiveness recovers hurting and uncomfortable persons back to normal life. When you forgive people and you forgive so easily, when you forgive them, one of the things forgiveness will do is that you'll be able to recover your brother. You'll be able to get him back to normal life. And a good example of that was Joseph and his brothers. Remember Joseph and his brother in the Bible? Now 
Jacob their father was dead and fear came upon all the other brothers now that our father had died is the one holding Joseph down from using his political placement from judging us now we will be in trouble so they walk up to Joseph and say to him our father says before he died you should forgive just pushing Joseph forward because they were not sure of what his reaction will be. So he started telling him. And Joseph says, listen, I have nothing to hold against you. God sent me ahead of you. Let's read it. Very beautiful scripture. God sent me ahead of you to preserve you. Genesis 50. Verse 16 to 22. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, verse 17, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, Forgive the trespass of the servants of God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Verse 18. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be your servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye taught evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now therefore fear you not, I will nourish you. That is when people get forgiveness. I will nourish you and your little ones and he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Amen. This is an amazing biblical practice of true forgiveness. You forgive people. You forgive them. Recover them. Get them back to normal life. May God raise you to recover many lives. There are people hurting in different areas of life today and they are just looking for forgiveness somebody with a word of comfort somebody with a kind word somebody with an assurance that god can make you recover your life again forgiveness recovers hurting and uncomfortable persons back to normal life that is very important to note however when you fail to forgive, you lose the power of spiritual effectiveness. That's very important to note. Matthew 18, verse 19 to 22. When you fail to forgive people, you lose the power of spiritual effectiveness. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven verse 20 for where two or three are gathered together in my name there am i in the midst of them look at the next verse then came peter to him and said lord how often shall my brother sin against me and i forgive him Till seven times, verse 22. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Look at the progression of that discussion. Number one, Jesus said to his disciples, If two of you will agree as touching anything on earth, it will be done. You know, most times we stop on that verse of the power of agreement. But he's saying that if two or three gather together in my name, I will be in their midst. Divine presence, divine effectiveness, through the power of agreement. And now he says, one of them he was speaking to came to him, called Peter, and said, Sir, 
this is the seventh time on one matter I have been forgiven brother so and so I am tired wow tired and Jesus said no I didn't ask you to forgive seven times on one matter that the biblical procedure if you will not lose your spiritual effectiveness is that you forgive seven times seventy times four ninety times on one matter wow summary don't live in unforgiveness that's all he's saying keep making peace keep forgiving those who hurt you you might look cheap but you are not weak the one who forgive is not weak in fact in the truth of scripture the one who offer forgiveness to other people is the strongest of the team you are stronger you are most powerful when you offer forgiveness easily some homes are not working today because of unforgiveness some relationship inside church are strained today are reduced to a hey, good money a hey, good money just look at each other and turn to the other direction all because of unforgiveness there are people in church who know so many stories about each other and they avoid each other but we're praying together joining hands and says let's agree is a fake agreement when your heart is hurting against your brother and the way to win the battle is to learn to walk up to your brother you need that courage to tell your brother i feel hurt when i heard you said so and so about me that's why you don't come and put a gossip in my care it will not last if you try i will call the person you talk about I will ask you, are you sure what you are telling me? Said yes. So I'm going to call the person. I will tell you. And I will call that person. If he can come immediately, he will come. And I will say, can you repeat what you told me before this guy? So I'm not a good person to hide secrets of offenses with. It doesn't thrive around me. Why? I want to keep a healthy mind. I want to be sound in my mind. I don't want a situation. I lift up my hands in prayer and the devil comes to accuse me in my mind and say, you too, you are lifting up your hands. You. Who knows what I'm talking about here? That you are praying and the enemy comes to your mind and says to you, you. You are not righteous to lift up your hand. You are not correct to pray. Your mind is choked with too many negative stories. Have you read in your Bible that love does not keep record of evil? 1 Corinthians 13. Love does not keep record of evil. Some of you have diaries where you have written the offenses people did to you. Some of you have saved on your phone, telephone folder, information you are cooking up to use to finish another person. Just waiting for the time and the opportunity. That is not a Christian life. A Christian forgives even when it hurts the most. Forgive your wife. Forgive your husband. Forgive those who took advantage of you and abuse you. Forgive those who raped you. Forgive those guys who lured you into a wrong lifestyle. At least God is gaining you back now. Forgive that leader that was never sensitive to your need and took advantage of you and didn't know what you were going through. Forgive. Forgive difficult children who multiply your pains and sorrow as parents. You kept investing into that child he kept draining all the opportunity away and does not even know that he's draining opportunity away. Forgive. Forgive. It's so important. Love do not keep record of evil. If you have any book, any diary, if you have any page on your telephone that you keep records of people and say, yes, I'm just waiting for the right time. I'm going to pull out these evidences to nail him. Then you are less than the life of Christ. 
even though you live in church. But do people hurt one another? Yes. But it's good to understand how offenses work. When you live in offenses, you become more cheap and vulnerable to the enemy. Offenses make you avoid everyone that you think you have issues with. And in the process, you may also avoid somebody God has raised to help you. When you live in offenses, you lose people. Look at Amplified Version of 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Look at that last phrase. It says, it is not touchy. To love, you are not a touchy person. It's not touchy. It's not fretful. Somebody who love is not resentful. It says, it takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Love do not have record of evil. It doesn't keep offenses. Offenses can make you lose your helpers. They just walk away from you. And that is it. So it's so important for you to come to a point in your Christian journey where you overcome offenses and unforgiveness as a normal way of living. Don't mind people taking advantage of you. Your life will remain a gospel of a man that forgives easily. How great will a home be if the parties in that home forgives how? Easily. How great will a church be if everybody in church forgive how? Easily. Easily. Excuse your brother. Excuse your sister. We will have a great church. How great will our workplace look like if the staff forgive each other easily? What a beautiful thing to do. May we live that life. Forgiveness is not a sign of weakness. It's, an, it's, a, it's a sign of allowing God to do justice at his own time. There is a way God will show up in your defense because he feels. So when we keep talking about forgiveness, forgiveness, it does not mean people keep cheating you, take advantage of you. It only means making space for God to do justice. And God is a just God. And when God does justice on your behalf, he will deal with the matter to root level. And it will conquer it once and for all. What is the benefit of forgiveness? Number one, God will turn to good the evil intended or done to you. Genesis 15 verse 20. Benefit of forgiving other people. God will turn to good the evil intended or done to you. Joseph was speaking. He said, but as for you, ye taught evil against me, but God meant it unto good. I'm praying for somebody here today. As you offer forgiveness to other people, God will turn the evil done to you into a good thing. That was what God did for Joseph. God turned the evil. When you offer forgiveness to other people, one of the benefits you enjoy is that God turns the evil men, the embarrassment, the harassment, the shame they want to put you through. God turns it around for your good. Number two, God will use your painful lessons to mature you, to bring to pass. You see that phrase in the same Genesis 50 verse 20. You see that phrase, to bring to pass means God matures you through a process. He matures you through the pains, through the betrayers, through the things you've been through. He matures you. God matures people through the things we go through. I don't know what you are going through, but at times by what you go through, God matures you. God stabilizes you more emotionally and you are more calm. The things you will fight before and burn down the whole house. Now you are looking at it and reviewing it and said, Lord, I thank you for the maturity I have gained through these painful experiences. And I can tell you the truth. There are painful experiences. 
Number three, benefit of forgiving others. To save more people alive in surviving life famine. That was the testimony of Joseph. God has sent me ahead to save much life. Save more people. It's a benefit of forgiving other people. You'll be able to save more people. Touch more people. Reach out to more people. People will conclude that you are good to be with. Because your intention will be to save more lives, recover more lives, and help more lives. To save more people alive in surviving life famine. Don't forget at this point in Egypt, there was famine. Imagine Joseph had closed his eyes against his brother. They would die of famine. I hope you know that possibility. They would die of famine. But in the famine, the man who was offended, injured, was not being famished. He had more than enough because God turned it around. God turn it around. As you offer people forgiveness from today, may God turn it around to your benefit. God turn it around. And I can save more life from famine. Number five, benefit of forgiving other people. Forgiveness makes space to nourish, reinvest again to those who hurt you. That's verse 21 of Genesis 50. I love those two words I have used there. Nourish, reinvestment. In other words, if you forgive other people, you don't write them off. When you offer people forgiveness, you don't write them off. You give them space to be nourished, to be fed, to be loaded with fresh information as against the negative information they had before. And then you reinvest into them by giving them platforms, opportunities to perform like before. That is forgiveness. We trust that you've been blessed by this message preached by Reverend Samson Ajitomobi of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated. We invite you to worship with us every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday at the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated, Oloruru Ojo Ibadan. Or watch our services online via the Men of Isaka Vision Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can also listen to us on MIVradio.com. For inquiries, please call 0808 085-4818 or send an email to mivmandate2010 at gmail.com God bless you.